In today's video, we're going to look at how to shoot tethered into Capture One. Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel and if this is your first time here my name is Dan and I make videos about all sorts of things related to photography so welcome and today we're going to be talking about shooting tethered into Capture One. Now I've already made a video about this a, a while back but since then there's been some new features that have been added to Capture One as well as a new interface and so in order to answer some questions and also to bring people up to speed with the new interface I thought I would make a new video. So if you haven't shot Tethered before there are some really good reasons why you may want to consider doing so. Um, having a big screen on set it's just going to make things a lot easier so check in focus for example that's probably the most obvious one. Um, on the back of your camera you've got a screen and if you're just using that to check your focus unless you zoom in and out you're not going to be able to tell whether you've actually nailed the focus uh, but because you've got a nice big screen when you're shooting tethered you're going to be able to tell straight away uh, plus it's just nice to see uh, your scene on a nice big screen you're going to be able to pick up a lot more when you're looking at a big screen than when you're looking at the screen on the back of your camera now shooting tether doesn't require a lot of equipment and you may already have the stuff that you need anyway there's four things that you absolutely need in order to get started and there's some extra things that are going to make your life easier but you don't need them you just need these four things so the first thing that you need is some software uh, today we're going to be looking at capture one but you don't have to use this you can use Lightroom or you could use whatever came with your camera uh, but today we're looking at Capture One and if you want to follow along and you don't have a version of Capture One there'll be a link in the description of this video where you can download an evaluation copy to see if it's the right software for you. Now the second thing that you need is a computer so this is all basic stuff okay I did say that you probably already have this but I want to talk about the computer for a second because a lot of people think that you need the latest and greatest computer in order to run Capture One and that's simply not true. In fact, I think it was about a year and a half ago I was still using an iMac from 2009 and that ran uh, Capture One without any problems. Now, because it was an older computer, I wasn't able to run the latest version of Capture One but it didn't matter because um, Capture One, if you look at it historically, its superpower has always been tethered shooting. So even if you go back seven years ago, the tethering module inside of Capture One has been rock solid. So if you don't have a new computer that lets you run the latest version of Capture One, that's okay. You can still get an, uh, a bit of an older version, but just know that the tethering is going to be rock solid. The third thing that you need is a supported camera. Now this might sound basic to you, but you would not believe the number of questions that I get on a monthly basis asking me why somebody's camera doesn't work with Capture One. You need to make sure that your camera is supported by Capture One. Now I will put a link in the description of this video where you can go and see if your camera is in there. If your camera is not in there, it simply will not work, but that's not the end of the world. You could also try shooting tethered with Lightroom. And if that fails, often your camera manufacturer is going to be able to provide you with some basic software that's going to allow you to shoot tethered. The last thing you're going to need is a cable to connect your camera to your computer. Um, this is a bit of a hot topic and I don't understand why really. Um, there's people that say that you can just use and should use a cheap USB cable and then there's people like myself that say that you should maybe invest a little bit of money in a dedicated cable that is designed for shooting tethered. Now these ones here are made by a company called Tethered Tools and as you can tell from the name they make stuff for people that shoot tethered. Um, so these are made to be reliable and also as you can tell they're orange which means when you have these cables draped across the floor they become a lot more visible and it'll prevent people from tripping over them. So the other reason that I tell people to invest in a dedicated cable is that not all USB cables are the same. Some will only transmit power, others will transmit data only, um, others will do both and also there's limitations in how long a USB cable can be. Now these ones are really really reliable. Now if you're at home and you're just going to be experimenting then use whatever you want but if you're on set I think it's important to invest in something that's really reliable and it's not going to cause interruption uh, on your set to the shoot. Um, these ones here again Tether Tools if you're interested in finding out more about these I'll put a link in the description. Okay so two more things that I want to show you that are not necessary to get started however they're highly recommended. The 
first one is a jerk stopper, again by Tether Tools. And what this does is it protects the USB port on your camera. So if you can picture this, this is going to be, uh, you're going to plug this in to that end of the camera and uh, you're going to be shooting like this. However, if somebody does trip on the cable um, and you yank on this and you break the USB port on your camera, you're looking at around four or $500 to get that repaired. It doesn't matter which camera manufacturer um, we're talking about here. They're all expensive because the USB ports are mounted onto the motherboards of the camera. So it becomes really, really expensive. So what you can do instead is you can put a jerk stopper. So the way that this works is that you have two halves. One goes onto the camera buckle here on, on, on the camera. And then these things join together. Let me just put this down and I'll show you how this works. So how that works is that these two uh, join together. So now if somebody pulls on the cable, it, this takes up all the tension and it, it never actually gets to the actual USB port. So that's really uh, something that I would highly recommend, although you don't need it to get started. The other thing is an external hard drive. Uh, you don't really want to be shooting into the local drive of your computer because if you fill that up, which is really easy to do, um, regardless of whether you're using a Mac or a PC, your computer will lock up and create all sorts of issues. So shooting straight into an external hard drive is a much better option. I like these ones here. These are made by Samsung. Um, I can't see the model because I think it's been scratched off, but I'll put it down here and I'll put a link in the description uh, if you want to pick up one of these. These are really fast, they're small, and they're uh, very high capacity. So you can shoot all day into one of these. Um, so those are the two things that I would recommend, even though you don't need them. But what we're going to do now is I'm going to plug my 5D Mark IV. Uh, we're going to launch Capture One, and we're going to see what setting up a session looks like. Okay, so uh, I'm now on my computer, and I am going to launch Capture One. So we'll just wait until that opens up. And you are presented with the interface to Capture One. Now, you may have seen other videos on Capture One in the past, and in the interface may look a little bit different. And the reason for that is that Capture One is very customizable. So you can set up tools um, where you want them, and you can remove and add different tools. So you can you can really customize it to work exactly the way that you want to work. So that's why it might look a little bit different. But if you want to see what the default uh, view looks like in Capture One. After you launch it, you can always go up to the window menu up at the top, uh, click on Workspace and go to, oh, let me do that, Window, Workspace, Default. If you click on that, it will jump to the default view. Um, also handy if you ever create your own uh, custom setup and uh, you break something or, you, or something is missing or something is not quite working for whatever reason, you can always go back to the default and just rebuild it out again. We'll talk about that in a second. I'm actually going to show you how to do that. Um, but um, let's talk about a little bit about the different ways that you start a tethered session, both in Lightroom and in Capture One. Lightroom is very manual. You have to start a tethered session by clicking on the file menu, uh, navigating down to start a tethered session, and then you have to enter all the information about your session. Uh, you click OK, and then when it detects your camera, the floating bar will appear, and that means that you're now shooting tethered. Capture One works a little bit different to that. It um, it all it automatically is set up to detect a camera, and, and the second that it does, you can start shooting tethered then and there. So there's no manual. Um, I mean, we'll, we'll go in there and change some of the settings in a second, but there is a default sort of um, mode that uh, it will just work when, when it detects a camera. Now, let's talk about the camera setup for a second. There's two things that I want you to uh, just keep in mind that are going to make things easier for you uh, on your camera. Whenever you're shooting tethered, set your camera to manual exposure, okay? And then also turn on the autofocus. Um, those things are going to make your life a lot easier, and I'll explain that a little bit later in uh, in the video. So let's have a look at some of the uh, these um, application tabs up on the top. Uh, th these are actually called tool tabs. And you can sort of, I guess, compare them to the mod uh, to the uh, modules inside of Lightroom where you've got your library module, you've got your develop module and so forth. These are not modules. What they are, they are collections of tools. Okay, so if I go into the adjust um, uh, tool tab, you will see that things like your exposure, 
in there, your contrast, that sort of thing. So that's what these are, okay? So the style obviously talks to, um, you know, uh, profiles and um, uh, shape talks about things like um, skewing things and and um, and like cropping, that sort of thing. And then we've got one called Tether. And Tether gives you a collection of tools that are useful uh, when you're shooting tethered. Now, this is what it looks like. And at the moment, under camera, it says no camera uh, available. And the reason for that is that my camera is sw switched off. But I'm going to turn on my camera now, and you will see how quickly uh, it detects the camera. Uh, it, it, it will take literally a second. So here we go. I'm going to turn the camera on now. Okay, the camera's on, and you can see that um, it's detected the camera. And from here, you can see all the settings of the camera. Okay, um, so in order to change any of these settings, all you got to do is just click on these numbers and you can change it to whatever setting you want. Okay, so all of these work the same. You've got your ISO, uh, there's your aperture and so forth. Um, uh, th this is your white balance. Uh, basically, you can change, you can control the camera from over here. So the other thing that I want to show you here is, in fact, let me just shoot a photo. This button here, um, is a trigger button so when i shoot this button or when i press this button it's going to take a photo at the moment i've got uh the uh i've got a camera in front of my camera i'm taking a picture of it there that's going to be my my subject as you can see the focus is off and this is where having your autofocus on on your camera is going to be really really handy so what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you uh, if you can see to the left of the shutter button um, there is a little camera and this is the live view mode that you can use on uh, it's just like looking at the live view on the back of your camera okay so this is actually live in fact I'll go put my hand in front of us so you can st just to prove to you that it's live okay so um, and then what I'll show you is that and this is a separate window by the way you'll notice over here that you've got the autofocus section so if I click on this little button in the middle that says autofocus in there, it will automatically grab the focus uh, just like, like the normal autofocus, okay? Um, I can also double click on certain sections of the photograph if I want to autofocus on that part of the photograph. And then I click it again. And uh, I mean, it's missed it this time, but that's a good thing because I wanted to show you something else. These buttons here, Okay, you've got these triangles. This is going to allow you to focus manually, okay, whilst the lens is in autofocus. What does this mean? I can rack the focus back and forth using these, these buttons. In fact, let me just show you. I'm just clicking on them, okay? So I can manually go in there and focus on that. Let me double click here so I can see it. Now that's a little bit off. So I can go back and forth until it's, focused now the three the one with the three triangles obviously does a bigger jump if i want to fine tune that i can use the little single ones okay and i've also got the double ones as well which go a little bit faster but that to me looks about right so i'll go back and you can see that that is now focused so this is uh something that only works if you've got your lens in auto focus mode and it needs that because it needs the motor to engage basically capture one um, hijacks the autofocus system and then, and then allows you to then rack the focus in and out using these little controls that you've got there. So it gives you really, really excellent control. Now, this is really useful when you're shooting things like product photography. Sometimes you need to have your camera set up in a spot where you're not going to be able to access it physically because you may have a little bit of a, a, a bit of a set built up around the camera. So you put the camera there and you don't want to stick in, you don't want to be sticking your hand in and knocking things around and so forth. Um, so this is really, really useful so that if you want to focus on something that's not immediately in front and the center of the frame, like this camera is, if I want to focus on something else, um, then you can always manually tune it so that it um, so that it, you can focus on the right thing. And every time that you fire off um, uh, the uh, the shutter now. Uh, you can it, it will lock onto that that position. So that is uh, live view. Uh, live view also very useful again, like we were talking about before with product photography, because it's live. 
um, then it becomes a lot easier to move your products around rather than have to take a photograph and have a look at the results before you move you know, your products around to get the, the, the right look with the live view. Obviously, much, much easier. You've got this nice big screen on your computer and you can move your products around until you get it looking exactly the, the way that you want to look. Um, and then you can fire off your shots. So that is uh, the live view window. I'm going to close that now because we don't need that anymore. Uh, from here, all i got to do is just click the shutter button in here and it will go and take the photograph. Um, so that is how we set up or how we get the camera going. Now, where are these photographs going? So let me show you under uh, the camera. Well, we've got, um, we've got the camera focus here that I just showed you before, but let's have a look at the, uh, the next capture location. That's this one over here. At the moment, um, if you click on this, this the destination dropdown, you've got a few different options. Um, this, Im this image is a folder names that I've created on other drives, and that's why it comes up. It, it, it will also show you a list of recent locations that you've used. Uh, but you can also put it inside of your catalog. Now, I don't like doing that. I like just having a folder where all the files go in there because... Um, just for my own sanity, I, I will open a folder and just ensure that the images are going in there. Okay, so if you click the bottom option, which is choose folders, um, at the moment, I've got it going into a folder called images. Okay, so that's where they're going. So, uh, but you can choose any drive that you want. So I'm just going to set that there. And what I'll do is I'll just move this to the side. I'll fire off another shot here. Okay, and what I want you to see is that on here is my folder with all my images. I've got three photos in there. Okay, and uh, what I'll do is I'll move the camera just so that you can tell the difference between one shot and the other. And I will fire another shot now. Okay, so obviously a different shot. You can see all your little thumbnails on the right hand side here, uh, so you can navigate through all your shots. Okay, and then on the window here on the folder, you can see that that's added a fourth one. Let's fire off another one, and you can see here on the left hand side, a fifth photo is added. So, this is a I like this because it's a nice and easy way for me to understand what's going on. Um, I'm controlling the camera on the Capture One interface, and I can see the files going into the folder. Okay, and these are raw files, you can see all the sizes in there. But I can see the, uh, the the files going in there, and for my own sanity, I know that I'm I'm capturing the images. The reason that this is so important is that Capture One works a little bit different. In fact, it works very different to Lightroom uh, when capturing images. All these images that you see here, I've got these five photographs in here. None of these have been saved to the card on the camera because that's not how Capture One works. Capture One will only send images to the computer, it will not save anything to the SD card, and that is by design. Now, there are some exceptions, there are some cameras that will do that, but generally speaking, they do not save to the card, they only save to the computer, okay? So that's a really important thing to, um, to, uh, to, to keep in mind, because you need to make sure that the tethering is working correctly, otherwise you might just might be shooting and not saving your files anywhere. Um, okay, so let me show you something else that um, that is really useful inside of Capture One. This is the Tether uh, tool tab that Capture One gives you by default. But you may decide that, um, let me give you an example. So let's say that I've just shot this and I want to make it a little bit um, a little bit brighter. Okay, I will go into the Adjust tool tab and then I can move the exposure slider okay to get it to the way that i want let's say i want it nice and bright there and i want to bring my uh the the uh the highlights down okay now that means that i'm jumping between this tool tab and this tool tab, tool tab in order to do things now what i could do is i could add the exposure slider to this part of the tool tab okay but what i'm going to show you something is, is something that i think is actually better let me just expand this a little bit bigger we're going to click on the three dots here we're going to go to add tool tab and we're going to go to custom tool tab 
And uh, I'm going to call this one Dan. Okay. And uh, we're going to add the tab. And as you can see, in fact, let me make it a little bit bigger. There, now you can see it. I've got a new tool tab in there, uh, but it is empty. So I am going to right mouse click on the tool tab that I've just created. I'm going to go to add tools. And now I've got all this, a range of um, different tools that I can add to this one here. So like uh, my own custom folder. Okay. So obviously we're going to do the camera because we want to make sure that we can see the camera controls. And uh, we'll do it again. And we're going to put, say, the camera focus because that's really important. Okay. Uh, we're going to go in and maybe do, let's do uh, exposure as well. Actually, let's put a histogram first. Let's go, where's the histogram? And uh, then let's do an exposure as well. Okay. And then let's do, uh, what else can we do? Let's do a next capture naming. Okay. Let's do, where is it? Next capture naming. And let's do the next capture location. Okay. Okay. So for me, this is perfect. I don't really need a lot more than this. Um, the next capture naming just allows me to set the names of uh, the files. Okay. So at the moment, you can see here it's got Pro Capture One. And if you look at the file names that have been saved onto the folder, it says Pro Capture One. And then it just adds a numerical value at the end. So you can get really funky with this stuff and you can, you've got all sorts of things that you can add in there and, and, and then some custom ones as well. Um, so that's uh, really, really handy. And then the next capture location, I've already shown you that. So this is where you go in and you choose the folder that you want your files uh, to be saved at. So, um, and you can create, you can actually get rid of all these uh, tool tabs up at the top and just create your own ones that make sense to you. Um, because, um, that's one of the things really that makes Capture One really, really powerful. You can have your own screen where literally you don't have to leave that one screen. You could just have all the things that you need in one place and it makes it really, really uh, easy to um, uh, really easy to work. And you can have this stuff on the other side, by the way. It doesn't have to be on the left-hand side. You can have it on the right. You can have the, the, the previews, the, the thumbnails uh, on the bottom. Again, you can do whatever you want with it and just make it look exactly the way that you want. Now, I did want to cover one last thing as well, which is something that Capture One has uh, it recently released, I think in the last three weeks, uh, which is this uh, concept of um, disconnecting from the uh, from the the tether. So one of the things that you will struggle with if you shoot tethered in Lightroom is sometimes the cable will disconnect from the camera. Uh, or from the computer, somebody might trip on it, or just when you're handling the camera, the cable might come loose and might come off, uh, disconnect off the camera. If you do that, when you reconnect to the, uh, when you reconnect it back to the camera, you have to start your tethered session again in Lightroom. That is, with Capture One, you don't have to do that anymore. Uh, one of the great things is that if you disconnect the camera from or the cable from the camera you will continue shooting and it will then save those images to the card. And all you have to do is reconnect the cable and Capture One will automatically transfer those images that it missed from the card back into your tethered session. It will bring them into here and then you can just continue shooting just like normal. Okay, so that is something that is uh, really, really useful. In fact, what I'm going to do now is I am going to, uh, I'll just grab my camera. And I'll just bring your attention to this section over here, which is uh, the camera controls. All I'm going to do is pull the cable off the back of the camera. Okay, and you can see that it says camera disconnected, but I'm just going to shoot another couple of shots okay okay so i've shot another two photographs i'm just going to reconnect the cable now again onto the camera okay and you can see that it's brought the two photographs that i shot whilst untethered terrible shots uh, but you see what i mean it already has brought them into the catalog and now if I just start shooting tethered again, it will just continue like nothing's happened. And that's really, really useful. 
Okay, there's a couple of reasons. I mean, like I said, you could accidentally disconnect the camera, but also sometimes there is a, a, an actual need for you to disconnect. Maybe you need to walk right up to your subject or you need to step back and you your cable just isn't long enough. So this is really, really useful because it means that it just doesn't, it doesn't, miss, a, uh, it doesn't miss a bit, right? It just, it will keep going and it will keep you uh, working without having to go in and retype in all of the information um, f- about your tether again. You just don't have to do it. So that is, I think, a brilliant, brilliant uh, feature, as well as it also introduced a whole bunch of AI features, which I'm going to be covering in a video maybe next week, um, and which may be a little bit controversial. So um, if you don't want to miss on that, make sure that you do hit the subscribe button so that uh, you can see that when that is launched. Anyway, that's it uh, for this. I don't think there's anything else that I want to show you. If you have any questions, though, of course, you know, leave them in the comments section and I'd be happy to answer any questions. The idea with this video is just to get you up and running. There's a million other things that I can show you. Um, very, very powerful uh, application. If you are shooting tethered, I don't think really there's a choice unless obviously you know, you can't afford to have both applications. I still use Lightroom and Lightroom is better at certain things, but when it comes to tethering, there's no competition. Capture One is much better. Um, but um, yes, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section and I'll be happy to answer them. Anyway, I hope you found this information useful, but if you do have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below and I'll do my very best to answer them. And if you did like the video and you would like to support me, please make sure to click the like button. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, consider doing so. I make videos like this every week to help you with your photography. So if you don't want to miss out on any of those, click the subscribe button and the notification bell and that way you'll be notified when I upload a new video. So that's everything for this video. I want to thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.